Yes, that's right. We are already in episode 22. And we are here to discuss about the presentation-related questions of liabilities. Again, let me make it clear, liabilities. And not only the loans payable. Well, actually guys, all the possible questions that we have discussed so far are all applicable to other liabilities, like notes payable or bonds payable and other liabilities. Now, if you are new to this series, please watch the previous episodes first so that you can relate with this video lecture. So their links are on the description below or you have another option. You can go to my channel and playlists and click on accounting for notes, loans and bond series. But if you're done watching those, then let's get started. So again, this is the timeline that we have completed many episodes ago. And here are the balances of your loans that will be reflected on your financial statements. However, in liabilities like this, where the principal is paid in installments, this balances right here is composed actually of current and non-current portions. And those portions are separately presented in the financial statements. So the current portion will be reflected in the current liability section and the non-current portion will be presented in the non-current liability section. And actually, the presentation-related questions are just the computations of those current and non-current portions. Like the first question is actually, what should be presented as current portion of the liability? At the end of the years 1 to 5. Why end? It's because it's actually the moment where the financial statements are dated or made. Right? Of course, we only have end of year 1 to 4 here because at the end of year 5, we expect that the liability will be zero because it will already be extinguished. Right? Now, the second question is actually the opposite of the first question, which is, what should be presented as non-current portion of our liability, okay? Now, it's time to answer. Let's start at the end of year one. So here, we have a liability balance of 3,763,354. So let's answer the first question. What's the current portion of that? So to get that, we need to move one year later or move forward one year later and see if some of the liability balance has been extinguished within that one year, okay? So one year later, the balance is this one, right? So we can conclude that some of this has been paid within one year because the payable balance has become lesser, right? So the balance that were paid one year from the end of year one is the current portion of the liability, which is 910,764, which is the difference of this and this one. Now, for the non-current portion for end of year one, let's see again one year later in the future. And the balance is 2,852,590. So, which is still outstanding. So, now, it will now be considered as the non-current portion of this 3,763,354 because this balance was still existing and still unpaid even after one year. Okay? And as you have been told in the past episodes, or in the past in your subjects, current liabilities are those liabilities that are settled within one year or less, right? And the non-current liabilities are those liabilities which are settled in more than a year later, right? Which is why we observe the liability one year later from the end of year one. And again, the decline, which is again 910,764, has been considered current because it was paid within one year in the future. And 
the remainder which is again 2,852,590 became the non-current portion. So, in presenting the loans at the end of year 1, this 3,763,354 balance will be split. So, the 910,764 will be presented in the current liability section and this 2,852,590 will be in the non-current liability section. So, it's just like that. Okay? Now, Let's complete the end of year 2 to 4, current and non-current portions after this. So, at the end of year 2, it's just the same. You just have to go forward 1 year or 12 months later and see the balance, okay? So, from 2,852,590, after one year, it only became 1,923,426. So, there is a decline. And that decline, which is the amount settled within one year, is 929,164. So, that will be registered here as the current portion. And... Then 1,923,426, which is the unsettled liability even after one year, is automatically the non-current portion. Okay? Now, let's go to end of year 3. So again, let's go forward one year and observe the balance. So now, it is now 973,471. So... 1,923,426 minus this 973,471, which is 949,955, will become the current portion at the end of year 3. And this unsettled 973,471 will become the non-current portion. Okay? Last is we have at the end of year 4. Again, let's go forward one year later. Well, the balance here is supposed to be zero after one year, right? 22 is just here because of problems on rounding of factors. So again, let's assume that this is zero here. So it can be concluded that this whole 973,471 was paid after one year or payable after one year. So, let's put that here, the overall, as the current portion. And let's put zero for the non-current portion. Because again, everything in this balance is already payable within one year. Okay? So, that's how you separate the current and the non-current portion for liabilities. Now, guys, in addition to that, I have an additional information. If the principal is only paid once at the end of the maturity term, then expect that there will be no current portions at the earlier years. All will be presented as non-current unless it's already one year before the principal payment. Okay? Like in this example, we have in this series, we have 5 million principal to be paid. Right? But it is to be paid um, 1 million each year. What if this principal is to be paid all at once in year 5? So, you can conclude that at the end of year 1 to year 3, there will be no current portions of the payable. All of the 5 million balance or any liability that will be computed will be presented as non-current. But, if we talk about the balance at the end of year 4, which is one year before maturity, then the liability balance will now be fully presented as current because it is already scheduled to be paid within one year. Okay? And another additional information for you guys. Actually, the classification of current and non-current portion of liability based on whether the liability is payable within a year or not of course, it is payable. if it's payable within a year, it's to be reflected as current. 
And if it's not, then it will be considered as non-current. That particular standard is only applicable to liability accounts not related to operations, like this loans payable account that we are considering in this example. Okay? So, what do I mean? Let's elaborate. Loans payable account is normally related to financing activity rather than related to operations. Like for example, if you are a manufacturer of wine, your operations are related to the manufacture and selling of wines and loans payable to a bank is a little bit far from your operations. Okay, let's elaborate further. The loans payable is very different from liabilities related to operations, like payable or liabilities to your suppliers because your suppliers provided you with raw materials for manufacturing process. And it's very far from other examples of liabilities related to operations like unearned revenues from your customers who paid in advance for your services or products, or salaries payable to your workers, or income tax payable or tax liabilities, or notes payable to your suppliers, and the like. So, the standard for classifying the liabilities related to operations as either current or non-current is very much different. And we're going to talk about that in the next episode to keep this video short, okay? So, if you've learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and select all to be updated on my next videos. So, again, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.